Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Let's get to the news. Li Shu Fu, the former peasant farmer who's now a billionaire and who also owns Geely and Volvo, has come up with a novel way to market the Scandinavian brand in China. Speaking at the Global Automotive Forum in Wuhan, he points out that Volvos have carbon filters that clean up the air coming into the passenger compartment. He says he wants his Chinese customers to feel like they're stepping into Northern Europe every time they get into their Volvo. He brags that the air inside a Volvo is 20 times cleaner than the outside air. Specifically, he says the filters trap 90% of the smallest 2.5 micron particulates that can cause cancer and are a big concern amongst the Chinese people. And if you ask me, he's just come up with one of the greatest way to sell cars in China's smog choke cities. In early 2012, Peugeot and GM announced a partnership they claimed would save a billion dollars a year by 2016. But earlier today, the French automaker said they may never reach that goal, and it's now considering ending its alliance with GM. Peugeot is now in talks with its Chinese partner, Dongfeng, about selling it part of the company, as well as selling part to the French government. As we've reported from the very beginning, this alliance never made any sense to us. GM has already had to write off the $400 million it invested in PSA, so it hasn't saved a penny. And we wonder what gave GM the idea that this would work after all of its failed alliances in the past with Isuzu, Suzuki, Toyota, Subaru, and Fiat. Uh-oh, hopefully this isn't a sign of, bad, sign of bad things to come. Ford announced that it's idling its Michigan assembly plant for two weeks due to rising inventories of the Focus and the C-Max. The Detroit News reports that the company has built more than 35,000 C-Maxes this year, but it's only sold around 23,000 of them. This is the first time since the Great Recession that Ford has shut down a plant in the U.S. There's been a rash of CNG-powered vehicles coming out recently. Honda, of course, has had a CNG-powered Civic for a while. Chevrolet just announced a bi-fuel version of the Impala, and both Ford and Ram have CNG versions of their pickups. Now Mazda is going to be joining the mix. The company will be showcasing, showcasing the Mazda 3 Sky Active CNG concept at next month's Tokyo Motor Show. Like the Impala, the concept is bi-fuel, meaning it will run on both gasoline and CNG. And here's my auto line insight. If the shale bonanza continues to play out like this, it could start to affect the sales of hybrid and electric vehicles. Speaking of the Tokyo show, Honda showing off the vehicles it will have on display there. The two vehicles that caught our eye are the S660 concept and the N-Wagon. The 660 is a small open top sports car that looks like it could take on the likes of Mazda's MX-5 Miata. The four-door N-Wagon is the fourth model in the N-series of mini vehicles and looks like it seats up to five passengers. The boxy looking vehicle kind of reminds us of the Scion XB. The Tokyo Motor Show opens to the public November 23rd. We've kept you informed of all the production delays with the 2014 Jeep Cherokee, but happily, we can now give you the news that Chrysler has begun shipping them to its dealers. And for the last couple of days, we've been asking you to fill out a survey to help us make AutoLine even better. And we've been overwhelmed by the response. We were originally going to run those promos for two weeks, but we hit our response target in only a day and a half. Now we got to sift through all the responses we got, and we're working on that right now. We'll give you a full report on your feedback when that's complete. Also, a few of you complained that we were asking for too much personal information, like your name and the company that you worked at. Some of you thought we'd be using this data for data mining. Well, I can assure you that's not the case. We simply needed to quantify who was responding to the survey. So for those of you who would still like to submit suggestions without giving us all the other details, just shoot us an email. Send it to viewermail at autoline.tv. 
We promise you complete anonymity, and we always welcome good ideas. Okay, coming up next, a look at the way wheels keep getting bigger and bigger on cars and why that can cost you a pretty penny. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction. Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. I'm sure most of us have bought something because we thought it looked really good, only to later realize that it was not the most sensible purchase in the first place. I know I have. Well, the other day I got a call from a former coworker who told me about a customer who needed to replace the tires on her 2011 Chevy Traverse. No big deal, right? People got to replace tires all the time. But when you take into consideration that this Traverse has 20 inch wheels, it can become a big deal. I bet you could guess that the tires were not cheap. But what you may not know is that when stepping up into that next trim level for those bigger shiny wheels, the price of a tire can increase significantly. After some research, I found that on average, the price of a tire goes up about 20% when opting for the next size up. So to use that Traverse as an example, it comes standard with 17 inch wheels. And on average, someone would spend about 600 bucks on a set of four tires. The next trim level up, 18 inch wheels are available. And on those tires, it would cost about 700 bucks for four, which is about an 18% increase and right on line with that 20% average. But when you make the next jump up to the 20 inch wheels, now you're gonna spend over 35% more or about $1,000 for the set, which nearly brought that customer I mentioned before to tears. Now not every vehicle is like this, but of the research I did, Every manufacturer has at least one vehicle that follows a similar pattern. So to all you car companies out there, make sure to keep the smaller diameter wheels, and I think it would be really cool if they were available on the higher trim levels. And to the customer, 20 inch wheels may look great, but these are the kinds of things you should be on the lookout for, because it could save you a big headache and possibly even a tear or two. For Autoline Garage, I'm Sean McElroy. In tomorrow's show, we're going to have another installment of the AutoLine Design Handbook with Jim Hall with his explanation of why those wheels keep getting bigger. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching.